Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction horror film, Hellraiser Part 4 Bloodline. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in the far-off future year of 2127, where an engineer named Paul is aboard the space station Minos. He is overlooking a robot holding the famous puzzle box, which opens the portal to the dimension of the otherworldly creatures, called Cenobites. Armed soldiers break through the station's door and inch closer to the room where Paul is. He takes control of the robot and enters a combination to unlock the puzzle box. This causes the robot to explode and the leader of the Cenobites, Pinhead, to break free from the puzzle box. He now appears in front of Paul and smirks at him. The soldiers storm inside and place Paul under arrest. The squad's captain explains to his subordinates that Paul is the engineer who made the space station for a large corporation. He suddenly decided to hijack it for unknown reasons, which resulted in their squad being dispatched to arrest him. Rimmer, a female member of the squad, is confident that she can get him to talk about his motives. She goes inside the room where Paul is being held. He has shackles on his wrists and appears to be eerily calm. He speaks about a great evil that has been unleashed and a mission that began centuries ago that he has to finish. The other workers on the station were already sent back to Earth, so he has to accomplish his task alone. But River still does not understand what evil Paul wants to defeat. He doesn't elaborate, but just says that whatever is her biggest fear, it is now in the station. He also reveals that he created the space station, so he could trap this great evil. Paul then asks Rimmer if she would let him finish what he started, if he would tell her the whole story. So he begins his tale in the year 1796 in France. His ancestor, Philip, was a toy maker and created the puzzle box for an aristocrat, who was obsessed with the occult. He did know that that box would create so much evil, pain, and suffering. But Philip was blinded by the renown he could claim once he finished the puzzle box for the aristocrat. He built all this, so his wife and unborn child would have a good future. Once done, he rushed off to the aristocrat's grand manor to show him his work. The aristocrat greedily took the box and paid him. The aristocrat lured a pretty peasant girl to his manor that same night. His ambitious assistant choked the unsuspecting girl to death. They then skinned her and removed her innards. They suspended her body, using hooks embedded in her skin. As her blood trickled to the floor, the aristocrat used the puzzle box and uttered a Latin incantation, causing a hole in the ground to appear. The emerged entity inhabited the peasant girl's body. After that, she rose as a demon, walking on earth that they can command, unless they go against Hell's wishes. The aristocrat named her Angelique, and she rejoiced in her new form. What they didn't know was that Philip was watching them. Philip was horrified by what he saw and decided that he would steal the box in order to undo the evil he had unsuspectingly brought to their world. But first, he tried to sketch another box that could neutralize the first puzzle box. One night, he broke into the aristocrat's mansion. He entered a room with blood dripping all over the walls. The aristocrat is tied to the chair with his blood drained from him while his assistant took over control of Angelique and was having fun with her in the bedroom. Philip tried to steal a puzzle box, but was caught by Angelique. She tempted him with her flesh, but Philip valiantly said no. The assistant snuck up behind him and knocked him to the floor. He gleefully informed Philip that because he made the puzzle box, he and his bloodline were now cursed. Philip's pregnant wife was worried about him, so she followed him to the aristocrat's mansion. She soon discovered him dying on the floor. Philip asked her for forgiveness for the part he played in opening a poor of hell and urged her to run away and be safe. Back to the present, Paul, who looks exactly like his ancestor Philip, narrates to Rimmer that ever since 1796, Philip's descendants have been haunted by visions of puzzle boxes and portals to hell. But it would be decades until one of the descendants would meet Angelique again. In 1996, this descendant, named John, kept dreaming of Angelique. His grandmother warned him about their bloodline's history, and had influenced even his work as an architect. John's latest skyscraper was bold and innovative, and it landed him a magazine cover. In Paris, Angelique stumbled upon the magazine cover and saw the descendant John, who looked like Philip as well. With Angelique through the centuries was the assistant, who hadn't aged at all. She asked him for permission to go to America, but he refused. He reminded her that she was under his thrall, and she had to obey his commands. Angelique's eyes turned black, and she forced him to the table with her demon strength. In an inhuman voice, she replied to the assistant that he was the one who was forgetting their deal. Angelique would obey him, as long as he didn't stand in the way of what Hell wanted. And right now, what Hell wanted was to end the puzzle box maker's bloodline finally. She clawed at his face and torturously nibbled at the pieces of skin, causing him to scream. That night, John was awarded in a lavish ceremony, recognizing his achievement as an architect. 
His newly completed skyscraper was built at the site, where the reporter Joey buried the puzzle box, after the events of the third episode. Because he was haunted by his family's history, John had subconsciously designed the skyscraper, to make it look like the puzzle box. When he got up on the stage to make his acceptance speech, Angelique appeared at the edge of the crowd, but vanished moments later. He recognized her as the terrifying woman from his haunting dreams, and this rattled John. He nervously finished the speech, and exited the stage. Angelique watched as John and his wife got in a limo to go home. She then turned her attention to a male guest, and towed him along to one of the rooms in the building. She followed her instincts to a nondescript cement pillar. Angelique punched it, and grabbed the puzzle box and case within. She then ordered the man to solve the puzzle box. He happily obeyed, thinking she would spend a night with him if he solved it. He entered a combination, and this released Pinhead into the world. The two knew each other from their days in the hellish dimension of the Cenobites, and they quickly formed an alliance to end John's bloodline, since he had the ability to end them. Pinhead looked around the skyscraper that resembled the puzzle box, and he remarked that it has immense power. The next day, John went to work in his firm. Angelique visited him, and noticed an old sketch drawn on parchment framed on the wall. John explained that the sketch was made by his ancestor, and his latest project is based on it. He showed her the computer render of a box, made with reflecting mirrors on all sides, which can create blinding light. However, he hadn't mastered every detail yet. Angelique's eyes widened, and she realized that John was unknowingly creating the puzzle box, which could destroy Angelique and the demons on Earth based on his ancestor's idea. Therefore, she said that the two of them share a destiny, and then she disappeared in a blink of an eye. That night, John dreamed of a naked Angelique in bed. He was awakened by a call from her, asking if they could meet again that day. He spoke in hushed tones as he agreed. Beside him in bed was his wife, and he lied to her, saying that it was a Japanese client who called. The wife doubted him, but said nothing. Meanwhile, Pinhead had grown tired of Angelique's methods. Because it had been centuries since she's been in hell, Angelique's technique of seducing men to get what she wants was totally outdated. Pinhead's reign in hell was marked by outright torture and pain, and it is clear that while they both are from the same dimension, their beliefs clash. At that same time, two security guards patrolled the new skyscraper, and stumbled upon a door that was not included in the blueprints. They entered it, and discovered Pinhead and Angelique. As a demonstration of how effective his methods are, Pinhead tortured the two security guards by melting half their faces and forcefully conjoining them. He then announced that he will inflict pain on John by hurting his child and wife. Later, Angelique met with John, and attempted to seduce him, but he refused her advances. Pinhead kidnapped John's wife and son, and took them to the skyscraper as bait to lure John. John rushed to the building and got them. He put his son in the elevator, and sent his wife to take the stairs. His wife was chased by Pinhead's monstrous dog. She grabbed the puzzle box, and used it to send the smelly dog back to hell. Angelique found John's son, and kept him as a hostage to force John to activate the mirror box he was working on. He'd obeyed and switched on the computer. Light reverberated through the mirrored walls just in time, as Pinhead was walking to the center of the room. But John's mirror box failed, so Pinhead skewered him in the throat with a hook, and brutally decapitated him. But unfortunately, his wife entered the room, and unleashed the puzzle box, bombing Angelique and Pinhead back to hell. Back to the present, Paul tells Rimmer that John's son had survived, and carry on the bloodline. When Paul was growing up, he started having dreams about his family's past, and their mission to close the portal to hell. This is the reason why he built the space station, and commandeered it. When he unlocked the box earlier, he had already released Pinhead, the conjoined security guards, and an enslaved Angelique. They are now biding their time on the space station. Paul pleads with Rimmer to let him continue his plan, but their captain orders him to be detained in his cell, until they depart the space station. On the other side, Pinhead makes his move and lures one of the soldiers, by pretending to be a trapped child. He then shoots hooks toward the soldier's face, and rips his face clean. Meanwhile, Angelique dons her beautiful human form once again, and attracts another hormone-rich soldier. She then drags him through the mirror, and finishes him off. Elsewhere, the conjoined security guards trap the captain, and squash him between their bodies, pulverizing him to death. After that, only Rimmer and Paul are left. He convinces Rimmer to board the escape pod away, but she is worried that he will be reckless and sacrifice his life. Paul assures her that he doesn't plan on dying anytime soon. Rimmer runs for her life, and she is chased by the same monstrous dog. She manages to hide behind a locked door just in time. Paul and Pinhead come face to face the culmination of several centuries' enmity. Pinhead remarks that he is so like his ancestors in his determination and hope, but he will suffer the same poor fate as they did. However, Paul does not agree. He suddenly disappears, 
and this move sends some chilling hormones down Pinhead's spine. A screen flickers on, and it shows Paul aboard the escape pod, with Rimmer by his side. It turns out Paul used a hologram of himself to keep Pinhead distracted, while he boards the escape pod, and readies his invention. What's more, Minos is not just a space station, but a larger and more advanced upgrade to John and Philip's ideas, for vanquishing Pinhead and the demons. The station is built with several gigantic mirrors, that will refract laser beams and generate enough light to permanently seal the gateway to help created by the puzzle box. Pinhead shrieks, as the station is engulfed by blinding light. The station's giant mirrors close in on itself and form a box, identical to the puzzle box created by John in 1796. Pinhead accepts that his fate is oblivion, and then the whole station explodes. The movie ends with Paul and Rimmer's escape pod heading back to Earth, seemingly safe from Pinhead's evil predilections. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.